Good afternoon, welcome. And on behalf of all of us behind the scenes here at Force Space, thanks for joining us for a presentation of prototypes made for the face mask challenge. Before handing it over to Dr. Anne Louise Davidson, who will contextualize and moderate the event, just a few tips for the audience uh, who's joining us. If you have questions throughout the session, we invite you to post them in the Q&A. Uh, that you see at the bottom of your screen and we'll attend to your questions in due course towards the end of the presentations. If you're watching on Facebook, feel free to comment there as well and we'll ensure that the panelists receive your questions here. So it's now my pleasure to welcome Concordia University Research Chair in Maker Culture, sorry, Dr. Anne Louise Davidson. Over to you, Anne Louise. Thank you, Anna. Thank you everybody for attending today. Um, so today we have an exciting uh, list of presenters, uh, six presenters coming from fine arts and engineering who will talk about the prototypes that they created during the face mask challenge. Um, so the face mask challenge occurred at a time that was uh, crucial uh, in the development of our response to COVID-19. Um, face masks were extremely, uh, there was a lot of controversy around face masks and people were talking about, you know, whether or not we should wear them. Was it secure? Was it not secure? And there was a lot of myths and fake science, um, worries uh, and controversies around the issue. Therefore, what happened uh, is uh, that at Concordia, the students have decided to join the force and uh, start iterating around what more secure face masks meant, how can we debunk some challenges, and at the same time, uh, they created some prototypes to propose some solutions to issues as simple as how can we remove the fog from our glasses? What's the problem with all this uh, acne and skin reactions that I'm receiving uh, from, uh, that I'm getting from, getting, uh, from wearing these face masks? So today we have presentations from six people who created prototypes. I'm not going to talk too much uh, in, the, in the beginning, but the, the best thing is that we listen to what the students have actually created and, uh, and, and prototyped, and uh, we'll open it up for questions and answers uh, at the end. So over to Larissa uh, to get started with um, her prototype. Hello, everyone. Hi. I'm just uh, sorry. I'm just uh, trying to. <laughs> what happened here? I'm not sure if I'm screen sharing. Oh. We don't see your screen just yet, Larissa. Okay. One second. I'm really sorry about this. Okay. Here we go. So my topic uh, for this research challenge was mask me, um, which has been a growing issue um, through uh, throughout uh, like since COVID started. Um, so what is mask me? Mask me is coined as the new acne. Um, basically, it comes from masks plus acne. <laughs> so its um, scientific name is acne me mechanica, and it's a skin condition um, that is brought on. Whoops by uh, prolonged just um, you know contact uh, to bacteria that build up in the in in the fabric that you're wearing on your face um, so basically the combination of heat friction blockage and humidity um, uh, causes masking so masks collect uh, uh, oil and sweat and dirt and that sits there and then you reapply it to your face constantly. So you can imagine what a sweet combo that is. <laughs> um, so who is affected? So people who um, suffer from, I mean, who experience, already experience um, these problems in their daily lives like skin conditions like acne, eczema, allergies, rosea and are sensitive maybe also to a uh, change in uh, temperatures or weather like humid or dry air. So the affected area, as you can see, <laughs> right exactly where the mask is pretty much. Of course, um, going from personal experiences, is, it's around the skin. Um, but yeah, it can be anywhere from nose, mouth, chin area where the bacteria uh, tends to build up. 
So factors that affect maskne, um, existing, like we said, skin issues, heat and humidity. And I got to say, for me, it started when I was in Japan and it's extremely humid in Japan. It's you, typically around 80, 90 percent humidity. That's just really normal. Um, so then also breathability, of course, and then the friction of the fabric against the face, the type of material and um, the chemical fabric treatment that the mask may have um, been under to, during production. So what's out there? Well, there are commercial face masks that are pre-treated with formaldehyde for disinfection. Uh, there are a lot of synthetic fabrics. Those are like the medical um, uh, masks uh, that we know. Uh, and then there are also heavily um, scented detergents and softer, softeners. And when those are used for rewashing or reusing um, fabric masks, uh, that can also cause uh, allergic reactions, itching, redness, or rashes. Possible solutions. All right. So um, you could be using 100% uh, cotton fabric uh, because cotton um, uh, allows for breathability. Uh, there are materials with less friction against the skin like silk, uh, natural fibers, uh, naturally dyed, which has been the focus of my research. Um, so trying to use uh, natural um, uh, sort of also Ayurvedic remedies like turmeric, which I will go on to talk about in a minute. Um, antibacterial essential oils, uh, which is also something that I have tried throughout the process, but more on application on face directly. Um, washing frequently and exposing to direct sunlight. So either or, but yeah, hanging your mask after use in direct sunlight to disinfect is an age old method and still works great. Uh, unscented uh, laundry products. So as natural as you can get. So turmeric, uh, it's a natural antioxidant. It's anti-inflammatory and it um, possibly has anti-aging benefits. So the primary and uh, active component of turmeric is curcum. And um, uh, so turmeric has been used uh, medicinally in, for example, India since, uh, gosh, knows how long. I don't have the exact year for you guys, sorry, but a very long time. And um, basically they would dye this clothing uh, for the wearer. And I learned during my research in Japan that they used to dye the fabric because as you know, in India, they wrap fabric around their bodies and the Jainism religion doesn't even allow for stitching. So it's literally just wrapped fabric. And it's, it was often dyed in turmeric um, because it was an easily accessible uh, medicine that you could literally suck on the fabric if you were um, ill or didn't feel good. Um, in, um, in Japan, it has been also used um, uh, traditionally for furoshiki, which is cloth wrapping, uh, to wrap precious items like kimonos and artworks to protect from bugs. On another note uh, about the Ayurvastra practice in India, they basically uh, create a concoction um, that's called kashaya, and it's like 40 medicinal plants, and there's one main reactant one. Um, that is used um, when they dye their fabrics. Um, experimentation. So on, um, on my, uh, in terms of what I've been working on, I've been uh, trying to, dye, I've been dyeing fa uh, fabric primarily in turmeric, but also other, um, other uh, resources that I have, basically food waste. And um, I have not been using any mordants um, to do my dyeing because I've been doing it in my own kitchen and wanted to do it as natural as possible in this kind of environment for, for the beginning. I've been piece dyeing, which means that you dye the fabric. Um, the fabric and then you can make your, your mask. I did a bit of garment dyeing, which means I pre-made a mask and then I dyed it, the, uh, the whole thing. Um, but I've noticed uh, during my experimentation of washing, I did use, I was also sometimes in a rush, you're in a rush, you use dish detergent, you think maybe that'll clean up my mask real quick, um, but um, that completely faded the color. Of course, there's the factor that I didn't use a mordant like iron or aluminum. 
So here are some dye samples. So here is this from onion, onion um, peels, a yellow onion. And here, this is from avocado pits. You can get this amazing peach color. Um, about like the actual uh, rem herbal remedies, I don't know about that. These were experiments uh, just using things that were around me and available. Uh, here we have pomegranate and turmeric. And I also went on to test out dyeing a, a shirt, a secondhand piece, um, secondhand piece of fabric. So turmeric issues, uh, light fastness, as you can see, um, is a common issue if you don't use mordants especially. So uh, then there was possibly iron contamination because my pot was also secondhand and I am not sure of the metal, but it started to rust it left rust uh, deposits. So it could have mixed with the dye. I'm not 100% sure that all my colors are, um, are the right colors because of that contamination. And here you can also see the reaction um, in the middle, in the image on the middle, you can see the reaction of my deodorant to the natural dye, creating a stain. And that deodorant was supposed to be pretty close, as, as close as possible to natural. Uh, observations. I was using the turmeric dyed masks. Uh, I've tried to use it one day and then wash, but I've also done like three days in a row. And I would only use it for half an hour max, I'm on one hour per day without washing them. And I did not uh, observe any major worsening of my acne, which is surprising because in Japan, it w I had a huge breakup after using the same mask for uh, two days, maybe three. Um, I also tried to know that I always tried to wash my face after use with anti tea oil. So that's another factor. I cannot, um, you know, fully say that natural dyeing has solved this issue because I also use tea tree oil on my face as a disinfectant. Um, using dishwash detergent uh, can basically cause, yeah, or, or harsher detergents can cause the fabric, uh, the color to fade. And like I said, iron rust may have affected the results. Challenges, so something that I wanna work on, measuring humidity. Um, okay, trying to figure out a better workspace where I can use mordants to fix the dyes. Um, a lack of uh, metrics to measure the impact on skin and irritation and um, the iron leakage um, may have affected my dye results and testing different detergents and deodorants reaction with natural dyes and um, with or without disinfecting the face, right? Um, to, to be able to give more accurate results. Um, so those are things I will uh, do to, um, to, to further my research as getting the proper tools, as I mentioned, and also talking to healthcare professionals and finding out more about um, the dermatological or science aspect of this, as my knowledge is limited in that field and I'm a designer. Um, also ideas would be to try these naturally dyed uh, turmeric items uh, on a, a turmeric dyed fabrics uh, with everyday other everyday items that come in contact with a face like a pillowcase, towels, face towels, obviously the masks, um, uh, testing silk versus cotton as well that is dyed with uh, natural, um, natural dyes. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Larissa. Yeah. So this was the contribution of the student uh, from Fine Arts. The five next contributions are from students from uh, engineering and um, business. So Zen Yang is the next one in line, not directly from the aerosol filtration lab, but he has worked a considerable amount of time in there with some very exciting results. So over to you, Zen Yang. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Jung Yang, and I'd like to present that I've done what I've done in this Bismarck challenge. So 
My project is basically an uh, in lab research. And the topic of my project is for personal protective masks and barrier masks, which can better protect our community. So, before this project, I believe that for sure that personal protective masks are better because the name indicates that they're protecting the wearers. However, after my research, I've totally changed my mind. So I divided my research into three experiments. Experiment one is to test the filtration performance of materials for personal protective masks. Experiment two is about fitting and leakage. And the last one is to test how barrier masks protect the community compared to the personal protective masks. So here's a quick recap of my last progress report. In experiment one, the pictures is showing the equipment that I used to test the material efficiency. After selling the sample mask in the wind tunnel, I measured the difference of mask concentration of aerosol before and after passing the mask to get the result. So here are the result of different brands of N95, KN95, single uh, surgical and single use mask that I've tested. And it seems that for N95, four out of five samples perform well, which has a filtration rate above 95%. For KN95, there's a huge difference between their performance and their expectation, which is also 95%. At last, single-use masks have a decent efficiency of above 70%. Okay, for the second experiment, my objective was to find out how important the fitting is for personal protective masks. So the setup is similar to the first experiment. The only difference that I test the performance on the mask on a mannequin inside the wind tunnel instead of sailing them on the wall. So I measure the difference of the mask con concentration before and after the mask to compare this result to the one I, I got in experiment one so that I can find out the, how much the leakage is between the mask and the mannequin. Okay, for N95 mask, I used the 3M8210 and 95 respirators as sample. So after four, sam four testing, so the average efficiency is with is a 58, 66% with leakage. For KN95, I used BD Battle KN95 protective mask as sample. After testing three different samples, the average efficiency with leakage is 22.27%. And for single use mask, after testing five different samples, the average efficiency is with leakage is 52.18%. So by comparing uh, compare the result I got from experiment one and experiment two, which experiment, exper experiment one is about only materials and experiment two is for the same mask on the mannequin with possible leakage. As we can see, for N95 mask, its performance decreased by 40.46%. Single use mask decreased by 21.5%. And K95 decreased by only 3.97% but because of the material efficiency is low already. But there's one thing that I need to clarify here. That is each person has different face shape. So the result of leakage of each, of each person might be different too. The result I got here is only for the testing mannequin. That's why for every healthcare workers who needs to wear an I-5 respirators, a fitting test is required for each single person in order to determine which type or which brand and which size to use to eliminate the leakage. However, my, my experiment can only give you a general idea of how much leakage it exists by using them without doing fitting tests. Okay, now we understand how important the leakage for the personal protective mask. Then we will see if there's a huge difference between the barrier mask and personal protective mask. In this experiment, I set up two mannequins, one aerosol, gener one aerosol generator, and one receiver. I put on N95 respirators and one layer textile homemade masks, respectively, on the mannequins. And then measure the mass concentration of aerosol. In order to minimize any possible air turbulence, a plastic blanket is used to cover the test area for more precise measurement. So the result that I got in ex this experiment is very interesting. First, the filtration efficiency. If both mannequins wear the homemade mask, 
is very close to both of them wearing N95 respirators, which is 88.3% versus 91.6% for a one foot distance and 91.8% versus 98.7% for two feet distance. And the efficiency of homemade mask increases as the distance between the generator and receiver increases. Second, both mannequin with a homemade mask have much more protection than only the receiver wearing the personal protected mask, which is 88.3% versus only 58% here for one foot distance and 91.8% versus only 59% for two feet distance. So even though the material of filtration, even though the material filtration rate of homemade mask is only about 20%, so that is that to, to, to say, if we want to be protected, rather than wearing a not perfectly sealed N95 respirator, making everybody wear a, even a homemade mask will be the most efficient way. And here are the conclusion of my research. First, for a personal protective mask, leakage huge, hugely affects the performance. They do not protect us as we expected without personal fitting tests. Second, in real life situation, personal protective masks work more likely as a barrier mask instead of a personal protective equipment. They tend to protect others more than protecting themselves if they are not perfectly sealed. Three, for barrier masks, material has no significant influence on their performance. Homemade masks work almost as well as non-sealed and night fire respirator. Last, for our community, letting everyone wearing even a homemade mask will eliminate COVID virus within no time. And at last, I need to thank Professor Balul and Claude Zild for offering me the lab and the equipment to conduct the experiment and give me advice on my research. Okay, that's all for my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Zhenyang. And now we go over to Yu Peng, who is currently in China. <clears throat> Hello everyone, I am Yu Peng Liu, majoring in finance, and my topic relates to the ear pain caused by the face mask. Uh, during this difficult time, it is essential for people to wear masks to prevent themselves from catching the disease. And I have been working on ear silver design to relieve pain for people who need to wear masks for a long time. And uh, this is really meaningful. Unless people who work in medical profession, they are not used to wearing masks all day. A plastic clip that allows you to hook the elastic loops will be helpful for relieving ear pain. And basically, you can use this clip to connect both loop. And the clip can hold the mask in position without any contaction with ears. As you can see, the clip's two sides are different. This loose clip not easily fall off from the strap. Well, you can easily t hook and unhook the mask at the back of your head. People definitely won't have their masks on all the time in their office place, for example, when they need to drink or eat. And this design allows people to take the mask off while the clip stays with your mask. The clip can still be taken off when you apply some force to it, just in case for changing a new mask, so it is reusable. And, uh, for my experiments, this clip fits most of the mark, well, most of the masks in the market, including medical masks, surgical masks, and N95 masks. I also upgraded my prototype since last meeting by using solid work, and I hope it can work as a way as the old prototype I have on hands. Because I filed to find a 3D printer, therefore I do not have a chance to test my new prototype if it will work as the way I planned. Uh, I made this clip with three choices, which allows users to select their perfect gear. Users can adjust the force applied by the elastic loop through this clip. And uh, this design is also helpful for people who like to keep beard but not massive kind of facial hair. Since my issue that people with facial hair will meet when wearing a mask is the leak proofness of the mask. 
And the first gear, which is tightness gear of the clip, allows them to apply more force around, around the chin. And uh, in order to achieve a better seal, in that case, a spongy mat will be very helpful, as shown in the picture. The mats are already tighter when we are holding the loops at the backs of head instead of ears, and let alone the first gear of the clip. The max might become very tight for people who want to use first gear to achieve a better sew around the chin and cause discomfort of no noses. We can stick the mite at the back of the mask where, the, where between the metal strip and nose. This spongy mat will relieve the strings caused by the straps. And to the material availability. The material of making a mask clip is not fat Fatidious. The, a paper clip can be an alternative for the mat clip. And for the, mat, for the clip shown above, it can be manufactured by any start, startup uh, factories or companies. And the spongy mats for masks can be bought online already. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Yubeng. And I look forward to seeing what this prototype looks like for real when we manage to 3D print it, so we'll uh, we'll keep we'll keep everybody updated. Over to Zain, uh, directly from the Middle East. At this point, we're approaching uh, more and more North America timeline by time zone by time zone. Yes. Hello everyone, my name is Zain and I'm an undergraduate co-op student studying mechanical engineering. And uh, today I will present uh, the issues tackled and the summary of my prototype during the face mask challenge. Uh, starting with the context of the project, I'm gonna go briefly over those points, uh, research, prob problems tackled, reflection after uh, several meetings and feasibility of the project, and as well as the prototype and procedures followed. Now here, uh, first of all, although I'm in mechanical engineering program, but I found that uh, this challenge will help me to vivid my knowledge and research abilities through critical thinking, team collaboration, creative thinking, and prototyping that will help me indeed in my future projects academically and when entering the workplace. Looking back from where I started with uh, zero knowledge of uh, face max and comparing it to now with the knowledge I gained and uh, the people I met with experts, or if someone like when I discuss with me about face masks, I will have the sufficient information to be involved in the discussion. So this challenge actually helped me understand the N95 standards and the surgical mask standards and the difference between them in terms of their characteristics and function. And as well for the material filtration and breathing comfort, I was able to realize that a mask that a person cannot breathe through is ineffective and dangerous. So we must always look at both filtration effectiveness and breathability when determining what, whether a filter material is appropriate for a, mask, for a face mask or not. And uh, also I get to know the filter breathability rate for civil material during my research. Now coming uh, through the mask fitting and design, I will elaborate more on this uh, topic in the following slides. But uh, as I breathe, I had a chance uh, to discuss uh, with the expert Silvana and share some good inv information and ideas and see different uh, design attachment and then analyze it according to my issues tackled. So for this uh, project, uh, my concern and issues tackled uh, was the ear saver and the nose clip design. For the, for the ear saver design, uh, before, like, uh, before looking on the types of attachment, uh, we have to keep in, the, in mind the, the following point, the aim of the design and the feasibility. We have to find a design that uh, provide ear comfort without being in contact with the ears especially when wearing the mask for a long time period. And as well wraps good around the ear, uh, sorry, around the head or neck, providing more crib and less loose, and also fits different size faces, and eventually can be easily made technically. Now coming for the nose clip, the nose clip has a significant impact on having more grip for the mask. 
It also has a face mask to fit our facial counter and has a direct relationship with the ear design attachment. We can use many types for the design. For example, as my colleague Yupang said, we can use the sponge mat that is in the KF95 Korean mask and uh, that has uh, three different layers and there's one layer which is uh, specialized for the nose part. For my, in my design, I use the al aluminum strip, which is cheap and can be adjusted easily. For example, when attached to a, a cotton or disposable mask, the aluminum strip will not cause allergies, fatigue, stress, or discomfort. It is soft and lightweight, managing to secure uh, the mask properly against the, no against the nose bridge. The ideal here is to have the option of removing the aluminum strip when washing the mask since it could deteriorate the mask or the fiber exactly, not to say it could rust. Uh, now the reflections and the feedback. Uh, just uh, to mention here, I, I was working with my colleague Yu Peng and we shared, actually we shared good ideas and uh, information concerning this topic. We had uh, two different designs and all, I also find that his design can be effective and uh, appropriate. Uh, for the contacting, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I had a chance to meet experts and I've been in contact with uh, Silvana. Thank you, Silvana, for uh, sharing some good uh, points and uh, information to be considered and taking care while uh, choosing uh, the design and uh, the attachment and uh, the, the design changement and adjustment. So here I'm gonna elaborate more on this topic. Uh, after, after having uh, some feedback and attending a workshop related to prototyping, I was able to change the design and do some adjustments uh, that I will discuss it in this uh, slide, yes. So here coming to the feasibility of the project. Uh, going with the strategies of this project, I had a chance to change the design to make it better and more feasible. As you can see here in this picture, my old design consists of uh, elastic strip, tooth pins, and three size buttons. This design actually addresses the issues needed. By this, I mean that by wrapping the elastic strap around the head or around the neck without being in contact with the ear, the loops of the mask can go first in the pins. Or if the size of the face was bigger, it can go to the second and third size buttons consecutively. However, the main problem was that when it comes to iteration in terms of positioning and tweaking, the elastic strip was falling down and becoming more loose, which is what we don't want in our design. We wanna make it more grip, especially when we iterate with variables such as position, length, and padding. So the concept used in this prototype follows the strategies from exploration, feasibility assessment, peer feedback, and discussion with facil facilitator and partners. Now elaborating about this, from the iteration concept, I was able to find some issues and do adjustment to make the design more feasible and more into achieving the aim. Concerning the parts, I changed from the elastic strap that it was made of 72% of polyester and 28% of rubber to completely elastic silicone strap with two plastic clips as shown in this figure. Some difficulties that I encountered are, it was a bit challenging to find the appropriate material for the elastic band that can last or tolerate without deterioration. For example, let's say when washing the mask or when exposed to sunlight for a long time or for the two plastic clips here, I wanna, I wanna make it less complicated for the user to stretch in it and pull it. So in this, in this slides, uh, I'm showing here the, my old design, which was made of the elastic 72% uh, polyester and 28% of rubber to the silicone, uh, completely silicone strap with the aluminum strip and uh, two plastic clips here. And uh, this, uh, I was sharing uh, some documentation and uh, my research. Uh, and uh, as Professor Anna said, I I'm in Lebanon now. So I had the chance to, the, to like explore uh, many stores uh, that, one, that uh, specialize in this, uh, in this uh, 
in this in this issues tackled like uh, from the, for the silicon part for the plastic clips for the size button and uh, actually tried on uh, different size bases and uh, actually tried on my little sister and it actually works i tried on me and it actually works so as a conclusion here uh, i want to shed i want to shed light on the, these three points uh, that I learned from this challenge, the innovation skills that I learned from crit critical thinking and creative thinking, as well as the knowledge and the good ideas and information that I shared with expert and my peers that helped me to do some adjustment in the design and make it more better. And uh, by deduction here, I wanna say that a mask that a person cannot breathe through or cause it irritation or uncomfortable is ineffective and poor. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Zain. Over to Hussein and Richard, who have worked in collaboration. I don't know uh, who wants to present first. Yeah, um, so um, I'm going to uh, be running the, the PowerPoint. And then when it's Hussein's part, I'll just be swapping uh, the slides for him. So yeah, my name is uh, Richard Schumacher and uh, Hussein. Uh, Shara uh, was my partner. So, all right. So, uh, face mask challenge. We were grouped together um, about two months ago, and uh, we we uh, decided to focus on. Uh, uh, sorry, Richard, we're not oh. seeing your power. You we're not seeing your screen right oh, now. Oh, sorry, my apologies. I no problem. Share it. There we go. Are we good? Yes. Can we see the face mask. Okay, excellent. So, uh, yeah, Hussein and I were uh, joined together about two months ago. Uh, we decided uh, that we want to do uh, independent research, but have uh, similarities. Um, my focus was on uh, trying to improve the anti-fog situation and for him it was the accessibility um, for for children because we know that they may get impatient while wearing it, they may touch it everywhere, take it off or and also just simply don't understand as uh, as the importance for it. So Anti-fog, um, basically, well, I wear glasses and ever since COVID has started, anytime I would wear a mask going into a grocery store or even in like April, May timeframe where it's still cold outside, your, your glasses completely fog up. So by wearing a face mask and glasses, um, the warm air that is exhaled through either your nose or your mouth uh, accumulates in the mask. Um, and then rises to its only exit point, which is usually the bridge of the nose, and therefore it fogs up the glasses. Um, as mentioned, it is an inconvenience when shopping and going outside in the fall and winter months, especially in, in Canada or when it, wherever it gets cold. Oops, next. Okay, so there were a few solutions uh, that I thought of. Initially, I found a, a hack on YouTube that you would put a, um, uh, a Kleenex over the bridge of your nose and fold it multiple times so that um, the material of the Kleenex would absorb the, the heat uh, coming from your exhale. I tried it multiple times and uh, I decided to leave it behind because it, it just simply didn't work, at least for me. So I uh, started thinking and it was to design a face mask with two small HEPA filters that allowed one way um, uh, exit. So allowing for quicker removal of uh, hot exhale while still assuring the uh, removal of any potential harmful bacteria uh, in these COVID situations, as well as um, design custom masks that cover the bridge of the nose uh, more and widen an area um, around the chin so that the airflow doesn't go up more so it leaves um, below. Um, but that became more difficult as I started realizing that many uh, humans have different faces. 
So to make something custom for everyone would, would just be inefficient. So I stuck with um, the design for uh, two small HEPA filters. So this was uh, the initial 2D um, sketch. Um, on the left and right sides, you have the parts that go around the ears, the string that goes around the ears. And then near the, the mouth, you would have two one-way filters out that would, um, that would obviously protect uh, anyone around them from the exhale. So it would trap any harmful um, bacteria. And then I uh, went on SolidWorks and I uh, spent uh, a couple of days catting. I will now um, just exit the presentation and show a better 3D um, example of my parts that I designed. So this is the face mask that I designed. Uh, quite difficult uh, for someone that has some experience, but the I needed to consult with some of my mechanical engineering friends that are um, in that have graduated and have a lot more experience than I do. Uh, we went for a band around the head because we noticed that a, um, a lot of individuals in hospitals they uh, who work there they wear glasses and uh, most of their uh, medical masks go around their head. So that was the design, and this. Right here is my filter assembly um, that is your in. This is where the air uh, leaves your mouth and this is where it gets filtered inside this gray HEPA filter and then X, uh, goes out into um, the, the environment. So now I'm gonna go back to my, there we go. All right, so uh, before I pass it on to Hussein, um, what I learned throughout this process was a lot more solid work skills as well as the research required um, to, um, to create a, a mask 3D printed or potentially 3D printed as well as um, the innovations that can be done uh, by adding filters or other improvements. All right, Hussein. So I'll be talking about the accessibility parts for kids. Um, so the CDC recommends that kids under two years old may not wear a mask since they are less susceptible to the disease, but, but that does not clear the fact that they might be asymptomatic. Um, so question rises when dealing with this problem. How can we overcome it? How can children be persuaded to wear masks and what is the appropriate masks for kids? So you can find related information about these articles, about this from an article written by New York Times. And I'll be basically summarizing what's written there. And the article is well articulated and, the, and uses the CDC, which is um, Center for Disease and Control Protection as its reference. So they suggest that it's important to convince kids to wear masks, especially in places where it's hard to stay two meters away from each other. They also emphasize that more, they also emphasize more that children, and according to, to statistics, they're less likely to be ill than adults. And they might have um, undetected or mild cases. So the CDC also, um, also encourages uh, that the masks that should at least have two layer of fabric cotton and without causing any discomfort. Um, yes, can you go to the next slide? Yeah. So it's mostly observed and due, due to its ease of use, most kids, most kids uh, have shoes that have uh, Velcro or a hook and loop strap. And this is obviously because it's easy to fasten it and unfasten it. And it's also, it also um, fits tightly on various head sizes and they can also be easily unfastened as I mentioned. Um, the, 
there is also another solution uh, for this is to to design a mask that has a friendly cartoonish design that gains uh, um, kids interest and also the the last uh, solution or one of the most important solution to in convincing and persuading kids to wear masks is the cognitive approach the cognitive approach is um, it's the processing of information in mind that will affect our way of thinking. So how can we do this is by educating kids, give them support, answer all the questions they have, and give them time to adapt to the new reality. And the most important, we as an adult, we should lead by example. We should let them follow us and, and, and see how we act so that they follow us. Um, also, we should make it fun for kids. Let them pretend to be doctors and encourage them. Kids are the future generation and it's important that the upbringing periods of kids be an encouraging and educating period so that when they grow up, they become the one leading by example. Um, the next slide, please. So this, so adding both issues, my, uh, Richard issue and my issue and, and both and combining both solutions will, will bring us to our prototype. This is supposed to be our final prototype. As you can see, there is um, a hook and loop strap at the, or a Velcro at the end of the mask, which will bring more uh, easy, easily accessibility to, to kids. And this is also a kids friendly design to gain their interest. This is the air filter that Richard talked about it. And the, uh, and the, the mask will be made of two layers of fabric cotton. Um, and yeah, this is our prototype. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Richard and Hussein. So this completes the presentations for uh, the face mask prototypes. Are there questions from the crowd? Anna, did any questions come in that we need to answer? Because I can lead the question area if you want, or I can take live questions. You can go ahead and lead. Okay. So in the end, one of the biggest challenges and biggest questions that people ask is, am I wearing this face mask for nothing? Because let's admit it, it is annoying and it is painful. The more we wear the paid the face masks, the more we realize uh, or the more we appreciate healthcare workers who have to wear these masks 12 hours a day or 10 hours a day on a regular basis. And at this point, teachers who are teaching in schools uh, who have to wear face masks uh, pretty much all the time and, and people who are working in essential services. So are they efficient? Are they not efficient? What plays? Is more complexity making the, the mask worse? The more you create seams, the more you can create places or areas where the virus can infiltrate or leave the face mask? Who wants to answer? Zanyan, you had a large part of that answer uh, in your, embedded in your presentation. And you walked in, I remember the challenge thinking that, you know, face masks can protect you. So do you want to elaborate a bit more on why people might think that face masks do protect or don't protect and what it is exactly that they might be missing in terms of information? Yeah, so according to uh, my research that, uh, well, uh, even me at the beginning that uh, I, I thought that, uh, for example, N95, K95, they call respirator instead of, they call, they, instead, instead of face mask. So uh, people will, will believe that uh, it's protecting the wearers. Well, if you wear those kind of respirator, you're protecting yourself. But the thing is that uh, fitting, like I said, fitting is a really important fact that plays in the, in, the, in the respirator. It means that normally that for the health work, healthcare workers, they have to do individual fitting tasks for each of them. But for us that uh, we don't have the uh, professional equipment to do that. 
And uh, if we don't do that, for sure, they will have some leakage for each of the respirators. So it, it is for sure that if we're exposed in a contaminated uh, environment, that will, that is for sure, we are, there's a chance that it will, will get transmitted as well. It's not like saying that a 95 95% efficiency, it's, it is 95% in the real life, it is not. It's, according to my experiment, experiment it's only 50% for an N95 not sealed. So, um, according to my experiment, so the total result to, uh, I got is that uh, letting everybody wearing face mask, no matter the, the material filtration, will protect the community. If, even though the, the textile homemade mask, even though the material filtration is only 20%, but if both of us wearing it, we'll have around 90% protection. Instead of only wearing, uh, only uh, one person wearing an N95 respirator, respirator, it will have only around 50%, 60% efficiency. So it's really important for the, our community to know that how important that the everybody we wearing the face mask, that is to protect all of us, not to protect ourselves, not to protect the others, but protect everybody of us. That's really important. So, but there's a new stat that I, I, I heard that the, the, the elementary school are starting and all the school are, uh, the high school are starting in the classroom. They are not, they are allowed not to wear the, wearing the face mask. This really, com it's really giving me a huge concern about that because first the, the ventilation in the classroom is not as good at, as out, outdoor but also that if you take your face mask off, that means that we are in a danger. We are exposed in a danger area. So I, I, I won't say that it's a bad idea for, for them, but the thing is that we really need to understand how important the face mask is in, in our community. Yes. Thanks, thank you, Zanyan. So the follow-up question is in terms of, you know, HIPAA filter versus cotton versus adding valves or removing valves. Um, this does, this does uh, have an impact on the efficiency of the face mask. So I guess the question for Hussein and, and Richard is, do you think that the valve or the filtration aspect of the HIPAA filter will be counterbalanced by the fact that you are choosing cotton, for example? For the face for the face mask fabric, or is that a question of fit? So what's the what's can you expand a little bit on that? I can expand on the uh, on the HEPA filter. After doing a lot of research, I have seen um, masks out in in public where people have, I guess, filters or something on the mask, and um, uh, I would need to do more research regarding the HEP, like the HEPA filter. I mean, HEPA just stands for like high particle something around those, it, like it, it traps a lot of particles. Does it trap enough? Um, I need to do more concrete research. Um, I found that it, it would, after researching, it was like, it, it may help with the anti-fog, but it may become a hassle as to always having to change the help of filter, et cetera, et cetera. So um, going into the cotton sense, uh, that would be more for uh, Hussein, but uh, I, I only realized that after all after my research. Yes, and indeed, that was the purpose of experimenting and trying things out, right? So if there is good fit, as suggested by Zeng Yang's research, and that would be supported by, uh, by Professor Balu's uh, research, research as well, if there is good fit and there are no leaks, then the question is, you know, how, how good is the particle filtration? So Absolutely. that's, that's, the, uh, that, that's the, the, the next step. And, and uh, Professor Balu does not have uh, the capacity to, uh, to intervene here, but uh, you can definitely follow up with him. So we're five minutes away from, uh, from the end. We had scheduled this to finish at four o'clock. One question came in, which is, um, is there a challenge winner? So uh, by definition, the challenge was not a competition. It was uh, a process. And uh, I think that the, the, best, the best way for me to explain what was happening is uh, that I share my screen so that you can see 
what we were up to in this challenge uh, pedagogically. What we were noticing were uh, the cases that were evolving. July 13, 13 million cases uh, across the world. The second time we met was August 3rd, 18 million cases. The third time we met, August 31st, 25 million cases. And September 8, uh, today, 27 million cases and uh, close to 900,000 deaths across the world. So this is an ongoing challenge. It's a humanity challenge and we will live with this for a very long time. So pedagogically, what we want is an ongoing improvement of how we understand face masks, how we wear them, how we build them and how we uh, communicate them to the public. And the universities are fertile grounds for this. So here's what a challenge looks like if you want to participate in one. You come in, there's first of all team building, we meet remotely, you can be anywhere on the planet, it doesn't matter where you stand, as long as you're able to wake up in the middle of the night to attend the challenge, probably Zen is falling asleep now and Yupeng is far into the night at this point. And there's exploration where people receive peer feedback, you're not alone in a challenge, everybody is being connected with you and you're connecting with everybody. Then there's a discussion with facilitators and partners. We bring in more people, more expertise, people who have expertise in materials, uh, fabrics, textiles, people who have experience in fibers, engineering, particle filtration, and uh, Then we move on to the research and the feasibility assessment to see can this be done with what I have? Because obviously you can have all the ideas in the world, but if you cannot do them, then you're working on the wrong thing. So you have to work on what you are able to do at the moment when you're doing it. Again, we go through a second loop of peer formative feedback and we have another Zoom session with facilitators and partners uh, who are able to bring in more expertise. Then there's a fabrication or the creation of a prototype, which uh, is also in collaboration with District 3 from, uh, from our, our university, Concordia University. And uh, today we have presentations where um, after the presentation, students will receive an acknowledgement of completion and be offered some more leadership opportunities. Uh, the more we go, the more the face masks are becoming a major challenge the more uh, we're seeing that they, um, they're not simple. They're not simple to make, they're not simple to understand. And there's a, a humongous effort that needs to be made so that the public can actually, um, can actually understand how to wear them, what to do, which mask to use. Um, there's another question which was, what was the most surprising thing students discovered in their research and that they didn't know before this project? And I guess I can let any student answer to, to complete our Q&A. Uh, for myself, um, it was just the broad variety of face masks that are available in the, in the world and how, you know, multiple companies have been researching on how to design better ones. And then I took it upon myself to, to learn that as well. And um, it's, a, it's a challenge. It is, uh, for lack of a better word, it really is. Um, there's a lot to think about, uh, you know, feelings around the ears. Uh, does it cover the nose? Does it cover your chin, your mouth? Is it comfortable to wear? What's the material thickness like? What, what are you going through? There's, there's more questions than you. There are answers and sometimes. And um, uh, yeah, that, that was a, that was a, big learning curve for me, but it was a, a great experience. Thank you, Richard. Um, so to complete my, my, my final answer, the challenge winner, who wins? It's, it's basically skills that are built, right? So starting with prototyping, uh, resourcefulness, but also critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, collaboration, um, and not to be missed, networking and, and opportunity seeking, right? The world is your playground, the planet is your playground. It doesn't stop at the university and it doesn't stop in a course. And it's ongoing knowledge that we're building and we need to have some leaders. There will be another opportunity to be involved in this face mask challenge uh, around the, mid of the middle of October uh, in the context of a new innovation lab that we will be launching. And there will be some news uh, about this uh, very, very soon. So uh, over to you, Anna. 
Thanks so much, and Louise, and thank you for those inspiring words on the first day back to school here at Concordia. Thanks for uh, letting us know how to get involved as well. That's great. And all of you, thank you for sharing your prototypes with us. So much diversity, um, considerate application in your projects. I probably speak on behalf of the audience when I say that your presentations obviously were timely, um, educational, and really creatively inspired. So thank you uh, for your work. Thanks for the uh, audience for joining us. And Dr. Anne Louise Davidson, thanks for inviting for space to take part in these presentations. For those of you on social media, check out what we're cooking up next at CU for space and access video archives of past events like today's on our website, which is concordia.ca slash four. The recordings will be available there probably as soon as tomorrow. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us here today. Enjoy the rest of your evening and congratulations on all of your hard work. See you again soon. Bye.